right. Welcome everybody. Get this all uh, all set up here. Oh, it seems like, oh, what's going on, man? How you doing? I, looks like there's something going on here. So, certain people, I'm getting messages that certain people aren't uh, able to, to see this. Let's see here. Uh, there we go here. Sorry for the delay. People got some technical difficulties. I was told I was having a good hair day. What's going on, man? What's up, Justin? How you been? I'm well, brother. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Just, so uh, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Good to see you, too. It's been... I, it's been I'm good. It's been a long time. Yes. Was it in Chicago that we met? Chicago, yeah. <laughs> that was like two years ago. Can you believe that? That's so crazy. Man, time flies. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's wild. That's, that's nuts. Yeah. So I, I've been doing this thing now with just other musicians, and I want to do this with a whole bunch of just creative people and just kind of talk to them, see how they're holding up this, this pandemic. And, um, you know, just I just I just wanted to you know kind of get you in and, and talk about the, your story, pretty much. And, uh, first of all, how's everybody doing so far? Who's uh, who's here? Um, let us know if you can hear us just fine. If our volumes are too loud or too too small. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's just jump right into it. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Like, tell tell us your your story and, and you know how you get started. Oh man, this is great. So I noticed that you said doing this, so I watched a bunch of them, which I thought were really cool. Thank you. Just, uh, you know, this, this is a great idea, so thanks for including me. And then second of all, I heard your music because you recorded with a good friend of mine, Eric Glauser. Ah, uh, yes. So I got to hear your music, your new record uh, in the studio, and I thought, holy wow, like, what a you know what a small world like the way everything just kind of like came together so that's like amazing so um so yeah i'm proud of you really excited for what um congratulations it's really awesome uh, thank you so much. um I a little it. bit of yeah man a little bit about me um i'm born and raised in nigeria in lagos nigeria um i've been here for about 10 years now um how did i get started Man, it's like, it's it's weird. Like, I think the real story is I went to an open mic one day somewhere in San Francisco and I found out that, you know, you couldn't play, um, basically, like, the open mic, you couldn't play cover songs. So I basically made up a song with some of the chords that I knew and it went well. And so I became a songwriter. <laughs> and um, after that, I, you know, I was in college at San Francisco State and I was using music as a way to build community and collaborate with people. And I ended up writing a song that became kind of like the, the soundtrack to our lives as international students at mm -hmm. the time. And they started using that song and the slide that I made as the kind of orientation video. And so that you know, and you know, and that just kind of let me see the opportunity to use music and as a as an as a tool to continue to do work in the world. And um, yeah, so that was about eight years ago now. That's awesome. That that's really cool. And I got to I got the chance to to check out. You know, it's just so hard. Like I've been looking at checking out all these musicians and uh, like. You know, as a musician myself, like I don't have time to check out everybody's stuff. And I, I you know, I, I saw your, your profile. Oh my god, let's see how you're how you're doing. I was checking out your stuff. I was like, God, I love your voice, and like you just you're just so talented. And 
I, I think you're just it's just so awesome. Oh, thank you, brother. And likewise, you know, the record I was listening to, I was like, man, you kind of giving me that, you know, old school soul vibe, like some Marvin Gaye stuff, you know, but very smooth. So, um, yeah, I want to hear like where you at with the music. Are you putting it out or are yeah, you, are I, you uh, done? Yeah, I just I kind of, you know, I released my my first album like in 2012 before I, I'm from New Jersey and um, I, I told myself before I move out here to, to California, I'm going to release this album and I released it. And then I got here and then, you know, responsibilities and kind of life kind of, kind of took over. You just try to make it here. And mm -hmm. It took me so You're long. You're in Napa, right? Was it? Where are you? Where are you now? I'm in uh, Northern, um, uh, Northern California. Like about just like an hour north of um, of San Francisco. Okay. So is that Napa or yeah, Santa Rosa? Santa, uh, north of Santa Rosa, like uh, okay. Windsor, right up there. Windsor. Okay. Yeah, Sweet. and um, so like you know, life just kind of happens, and and um, you know, just crazy stuff happens, and then I I took a I was still doing music and I was doing mostly covers, but I was just like, I gotta start writing my own stuff again. I need to get back onto the, to the grind. And um, so I released that that EP back in uh, actually a couple months ago, and I did uh, a band version and I actually did like a just an acoustic version. Nice. And did you record the acoustic version yourself? I recorded the acoustic version uh, in Florida, actually. Oh wow! Um, okay. Funny, well, my brother was going to do a, um, he's a, he's a professional bodybuilder. And okay. He was, it was like his first kind of major um, competition. So I was like, I'll fly over to, you know, to support you. And then, uh, long story short, he didn't end up going. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I was super fit. But I, I ended up, <laughs> yeah, I was like, but I was like, I'm going to make a, a trip out of this. So I, I went out there and I found a, a cool recording studio. And uh, we, we just kind of laid it all out. And, um, nice. So yeah, it was, it was it was pretty fun. And then uh, I went back. I want to do like a whole band kind of. There's, there's two versions of EP. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm on that re like reiterative um, process as well. Like all my songs, there's like you know four or five versions, different producers, like. Yeah, and you know, it's and it's 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 really allowed me to fall in love with the process. Mm -hmm. You know, like what it is is not just you know, it's not just like putting songs out, but like just making them. Like you know, like some songs will never even be performed, but I make a bunch of tracks on Logic that never no one would ever hear. But I've definitely loved to fall in love with the process and use it as my own kind of way to like learn more and to also like meditate and to heal um so it's nice to see that you know i like i like i like that i like that so is that one out as well or not yet yeah that one uh that one was out yeah so i released the band version in uh, march and then i re released the acoustic version on my, my uh, website um actually a couple of weeks ago so, oh wow okay sweet yeah um, yeah be sure to send it to me and I can shout you out on my next uh, newsletter. Um, yeah, how are, how are you? You're usually um, playing at yeah. Like, what, how are you coping right now? I'm doing I'm doing all right. Uh, usually, like my my uh, my main gig is is mostly wineries. Okay. And, um, I always felt like personally, like my main goal with music is just I just wanted to play at, like at the most beautiful places that I can possibly play. Into mm -hmm. it. And, and you know, around here, there's no shortage of wineries around here. I've, I've, there's sometimes I like I'll stop playing, just look around, like this is freaking beautiful, you know? And, yeah. <laughs> but air is really cool, so that's just been my goal, and I, I hope over time it's just gonna be like me just play when this whole thing kind of clears up. I end up playing at even you know more beautiful spots. Um, but right now, I'm, I'm kind of doing, you know, stuff like this. Um, different ideas kind of are popping up here. And I'm doing like personal uh, concerts for, for people who are in, like, on my newsletter and stuff. And, okay. uh, you know, doing, like, you know, takeovers, like social media takeovers with other with other wineries and companies. And stuff. So it's, it's really fun. Um, That's great. 
it's kind of scary because uh, you don't know how this whole thing's gonna end. But it's um, you know, it's a different experience. That's lovely. That's yeah. so lovely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, similarly, I'm, I'm playing a lot, like literally I just got called like maybe an hour ago to play a company like Mixer on mm-hmm. Zoom. So I basically was like running, running into my house and straight into performing for a corporate meeting. And um, that's like the second one this week that I've done. So it's, it's nice to, to see that in these times, like music becomes even more relevant, right? Like yeah. the, before it felt, it felt like people were forgetting the value, you know, it was come, almost like I was like having to pitch myself to places and come up with the whole business plan. Yeah. And now it's like such a high demand. I'm like, Oh wow. What changed? Like, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how this is making all of us come together and try and support each other. And, and, and just also just like, you know, the why, like, it, it's so it echoes the why I've chosen to do this so much, you know, because when economy shuts down, we still have music, you know, we still have live music. Um, and it's, yeah, it, it's been feeling great to be able to kind of show up in that way for community and, and stuff like that. That's awesome. What do you think is like, what would you consider like your why? Like, when this is all done and like either like you decide to retire or like you pass away or something like what would you want your legacy as a musician to kind of be my legacy as a musician um i think i think i think you know the people that uh, that are um, that mentor me and the music that 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 continues to the people that i look up to musically are people who had a message Um, like Bob Marley, Michael Jackson, you know, Prince, um, um, David Bowie, you know, the, the kind of extravagant, you know, guys who like every time you got them on camera, they were saying something that was more than that was human. It Mm -hmm. was about the the human condition and how that can, like how we can continue to make that better. And so for me, that's, that's, that's the same thing is that like, I, I want music to be a refreshing opportunity to share light and positivity on the world. And, and that's a lot of what the music that I make kind of speaks on, you know, just like the, the, um, the innate condition of being human and, and how to kind of have compassion over that. Um, and I think that I do that in, you know, in many different styles of music, but that I would say that's the, 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 the theme. That's awesome. Yeah. How about yourself? Um, I don't know. I, I just been kind of, I've been bouncing back and forth with a, with a, a lot of things. And I, I think it's just more like I've been in such of um, a lot of research on just luxury and mm-hmm. not so much as the way of um, the the traditional sense of luxury, but more of a like a way to try to find a way to just continue to better yourself, you know, mm-hmm. all, and being the best that you can possibly be. And um, so that terminology, that's just kind of what what I'm really looking towards towards doing. And so that I think that's why I I get drawn to the wanting to play at like the most amazing places that I can possibly play at. Kind of, mm-hmm. Like you see it in, just, in my version it's like I've made it and like that's just how it is. And so just doing that and and just being like respected probably by other musicians would be awesome. Like if I passed away and be like, yeah, he was a real one, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that legacy is already at play right now because, again, the way that I know Eric is we're both, you know, always in the studio. He's helped me, you know, from my very first album in 2015 that I wanted to put out where, I, you know, I crafted six songs and wanted that to be my soul. He's been there. So for him to have an interaction with you and just talk about your music and you, it, I would say that legacy is already it's already in motion. So good good work. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. That's so that's such a so crazy that you you're uh, you're also working with Eric. I didn't really realize that. 
Yeah, it's funny that he never brought that up. I think I think I I think he he was wise not to because it allowed for us to have this interaction in this way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it was it's a surprise for both of us so we could both kind of enjoy it. You know. Yeah, it, it's so, and he's he's just great at what he does, and um, he just has that amazing ability to whatever. Like I have a certain way, and he's like, oh, you can do this, and I was like, I never even would have thought of that way. He's mm. amazing. Yeah, he's great in the studio, and it, he's he's definitely encouraged me to enjoy again more of that that process. You know, again, I started street performing. I started you know performing more, but I never took to like learning the technology. And and when I try to make that album happen, that's when that whole process of getting into the technology started. That's when it became like, oh, okay. This is this is like the next thing to to get me to the type of art that I want to make, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was told there there's a lot of feedback on my end. Hold on. I'm not hearing that. Yeah, I'm not hearing that either. Hmm. The. I guess we'll just keep talking and hopefully go away. But yeah, I don't, I don't hear anything. Okay, I don't either. So you're fine. Um, just over here. Maybe it's just yeah. Yeah, if it continues, let me know. If anybody else is having uh, feedback issues, let me know, and I'll try to figure something out. Okay. So what um. Are you um, planning another album, and do you have any collaborations coming up? Um, I am planning on another album. Um, I was taking some time next year, and okay. um, I actually I have my next two albums kind of lined up of, of what I want to do. Okay. But right now, I've been doing this um, songwriting challenge for myself, and I've just been putting out like a new song that I wrote, wrote every single week. And, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I, I've just been kind of doing a, like, it's like a um, songwriting roulette, and I'll just take one of, like, my guitar, you know, dictionary song, like, uh, chord books, and, like, I'll close my eyes, and I'll just choose a random chord, and be like, that's my starting chord, so, and then I'll just create mm -hmm. something. It, it's totally just kind of challenged me and, you know, creating new melodies and, just, you know, hopefully, you know, making some fun stuff. That's amazing. Uh, is that on YouTube or where can I uh, find that? I yes, yeah, it's, it's on. What I put it on? It's actually on my Instagram. So you can check that out. Yeah, on my um, uh, my IGTV. Oh, sweet. I so yeah, that. yeah. Check my IGTV. I have like two weeks onto there, and then I I'll, I'm putting a new song up at like every single every single Monday. So. Check that out. That's yeah, definitely, good. definitely check that out and see. Like the last one, I was really happy with the the, the last song that I wrote, and I was, just, and it's just like inspired just by you know things that's happening around, and, and just um, you know be just learning how to be a better musician, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we should collaborate then. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of, you know. I would love to collaborate and just like work on uh, you know different different stuff and and um, I, I love your your style. There's not many people that I can think of that just kind of has have your your style. So I, I think that'd be just super fun to work with you. Yeah, let's do that. That would be great. That's yeah. uh, that that could be our next um, item in the next few weeks. You know, just start kicking kicking each other some some you know loops or guitar tracks or something. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Send projects back and forth. See what we do. See what we make. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Are there um, any recent like influences that you're, or any musicians or, or any, you know, poets or anything that you're, you're currently checking out that that's inspiring you? Um, Barack Obama. Okay. <laughs> I've been on a Barack fix because in these times it's just so sad to be experiencing a uh, different kind of leadership mm -hmm. one that 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 is just you know it's just not what i thought would be america today 
And so it's been, it's definitely giving me perspective. And I've started spending a lot of my, like when I wake up before I start writing or I just kind of watch an old, um, you know, whether old debate or old speech that he gave. And, and it's just interesting to, yeah, he's, he's giving me a lot of inspiration right now um musically yeah it is that's that's my main inspiration musically i'm just on that like i'm trying to push out old stuff mm -hmm. as much as possible and curate them in a way that makes sense for my audience mm -hmm. so i'm just trying to like push out stuff so like st just anything from the vault that i feel like is perfect for this year like i have a goal to put out five records this year whether it's a singles or eps yeah. But I'm gonna put out five major productions this year, so I'm, you know, I've been doing that, and so I feel like musically, yes, I'm working on some music and listening to other people's music, um, but I'm not really like in the studio building a new sound quite yet. I think I'm like in the push out and kind of ruminate on on what's coming in. As so the book is still in the. It's still in the Dutch oven. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Really. Is is there a song that you have in the vault that you like that you're actually that you kind of forgot about that you're just kind of like a hidden gem? You're like, oh man, this is actually pretty like that. Like, is there a song that you're just most excited about? Yeah, I just put that one out today. Actually, um, <clears throat> it's called Language. And um, it's not out on streaming yet, but I put it out today just as like a way to like get people to like listen to it and give me feedback and, you know, support me that way by mm -hmm. buying it from my website directly. Um, but another one I found is like this really cool, I think I wrote this one in Maui mm -hmm. and it's like this, it's just such a groovy, funky tune called Electric. And I definitely want to, I have to like re-record it and build it again, but it's so hard to recapture the vibe. So I've just been finding myself singing it and dancing it. But yeah. I'm like, how's how how is how is this one gonna end up coming out to the world? Because it feels like that 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 session is really like scattered, and yeah. it's like either I have to spend hours like organizing it and reframing it, or I have to start all over. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what about so, you? Uh, for me, I had I was just kind of like listening to like my old album and stuff, and there was a couple songs that I I I wrote that I kind of was dabbling when I started my song by challenge, and I was like, oh, I forgot about that. But um, I think my favorite song that it was like more personal for me was a song called "Save Me," and mm. uh, it was kind of like it was at the point with my life when like you're just getting older and like people in your family are just kind of like looking at you to kind of take the reins mm. uh, and you just like, and I don't think I was like ready for that at that particular moment, you know? Mm. And uh, it's, it's just like you becoming an, an adult, like super, super fast. Well, maybe it wasn't super fast, but <laughs> it felt like it was super fast to me. And yeah. How like, old are you now? If you don't mind me asking. Right now I'm, I'm, I'm 31. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. We're in that age where it's like, okay, when I was your age, I already had four what? kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, that's why I'm not doing that. That's why, yeah, I saw your mistakes and I'm like, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. That's, uh, that's crazy. I'm just kind of trying to imagine having like four kids like, right now. Ooh, stuck in the kids. house with you. Just stuck in the house. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just gonna be yelling at them for no reason now. It's just, just because I'm just agitated. You know, <laughs> you could, you could also have the Funky Browns. You know, it could be, a, it could be a great family band. You never know. You That's the thing. A the family kids. band. That would be. I would love to just do a family band. <laughs> the the Browns that would be great It'd be like the Jackson Fives. <laughs> yep. I always, you know, I wish if I had if I had just some record label be like BC. Here's a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. Do whatever. I think what I would end up doing is calling all my friends, like yourself, Brian Allison, 
anyone I've ever made music with, gone on tour with, and I'll think about some old school thing that needs to be brought back and just make up like a, a okay. remake of mm-hmm. an old school gem that just needs a new touch, like 10 yeah. years and, and like, you know, past 10 years ago, something like that. Just bring it back, make it fun and, and make a fun video with it. You know, and that would be yeah. like my year project to start off. <laughs> Yeah, if there's ain't money left, I might buy a house. <laughs> yeah. I would totally be into doing that. Like just coming up, like just bringing back the just the, the old school kind of the the music and everything, and just just kind of give it a you know a little bit of a modern touch and and mm-hmm. you know and all these bad like I don't know like I feel like again I feel like an old person now. I just feel like the old like the younger generation like, you bring up <laughs> certain artists are like who. And I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> I know it's like you don't know Marshmallow. You're like, what? You don't know? You don't know Al Green? <laughs> like, how do you not know any of these people? Yeah, that's how I knew that I was old. Uh, once I started going to, um, like, I, I worked at the Boys and Girls Club for Notes for Notes, and we built music studios in the Boys and Girls Club, and so I was working with all these kids. And all the songs that would be, you know, when I play out, you would get people singing along. These kids were like, huh? What's that? <laughs> and I was like, okay, damn. Oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, I'm old now. <laughs> yep. And I'm not even cool enough. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The and the record labels always want people that are cool enough. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not cool anymore. <laughs> Those days are over. Um, what do you think about Donald Glover? I love that dude. I think he's the most talented person. Uh, I was afraid to kind of usually my hair is short. I've been kind of afraid to to grow my hair because now people are like, oh, "You look like Donald Glover." I was like, I don't know about that. Uh, when, my, so, when, my, so. when my hair is long, I look like Donald Glover. My hair is short, I look like Morris Chestnut. Oh, nice. Most, that's a great person to be, to be a lookalike to. I'll take it. At, at this point, you could just walk into a record label's office and be like, yo. <laughs> Short hair, long hair. I think I think I can make you some money. <laughs> whatever, yeah, whatever you want. I don't know. I've always, always kind of desired. I always like the look of or the feel of being independent, you know? I don't know if mm. he's being like just cocky or what it is. It's just like I, I guess I've seen the path that like, a lot of people have gone through with the you know with the record deals, and it just seems like everyone who gets out of it, it seems like they they just got out of a war zone. Totally. You know what I mean? And it's just, yeah. Like, is it worth it? And uh, plus, I like over time, like I just want one day just I'm like I want to raise a family, and then like if I'm on tour for months on end, like, do I want to do that? It's just, it was such a weird kind of um, dynamic. Yeah, I hear that. It's interesting because I think, I think there's a part of me that is just like, I just want to get it for getting its sake. It's not even like, you know, it's not even like I really want it because I'm already doing all the things. Like, I make yeah. music, I go on tour. Yeah. But I think there's a the part of me that just like really wants that as a win, almost like a validation. Yeah, just like that um, like pedal, that pin on your chest to show that. Yeah. Worthy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think like like you're saying, like the more the older I get, the more I'm able to let go of that dream. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I think there's that five years, that twenty five where I was like, Oh shoot, this is really what I want. Which yeah. is kind of late to the game, you know. I felt like a lot of people are at that stage at 18 where, like, this is really what I want. But yeah. for me, I was pursuing engineering and then city planning. So it's like, it took me a while to be like, actually, this is where my my soul is and this is what I want. So I think I, I was still pushing on that. And so it's, I'm finally gradually letting go of that possibility because in my mind, everything is possible, right? Like yeah. it's, it's enough potential, and you should be able to, you should be able to reach for that potential. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm learning to, yeah, I'm learning. I've learned to enjoy my own wins because, also, luckily, 
the way that I've been doing it is starting to like carve its own road. So yeah. there's like the, the validation is already, you know, it's like it, I don't need external validation because I've fallen in love with the process so much that I think I'm just always going to be a musician. Like no matter what happens, come rain, come sun, I'm just always going to be doing this. Yeah. Um, and that feels good. You know, it, it's funny though. Like I don't, I actually like musicians who started later in their lives. You know what I mean? Because they, like I was thinking about like when I, like when I first started writing when I was like 16 or whatever, it's kind of like, what the hell mm-hmm. was I writing about? Like nothing happens in, like, in my life. As the in the in like in comparison to now, like nothing happened in my life where worth writing. Like I'm sure, like I was going through my stuff. I was a teenager. I was going, you know, you know, there was a girl I liked or something like that. But like, I think you know, actually experiencing life and, and all that it has to offer is like my writing and like the meaning behind the lyrics that I write is just so much more. Mm. So it's and. I think I was the way you you described you getting signed, you being signed, is the way I saw. Like my goal was getting a Grammy. And, yeah, like I was, I have the same goal. That yeah, that I was want the thing. I, was like, big goal. I wanted that Grammy. Like I wanted that thing. And then, like as you got older, like I look at that Grammy, and like oh, it's not what it like. It's not what. It, even if I end up getting one or whatever, it it wasn't why the reason why I got it. It's, right. The meaning behind it's completely different. Mm. That's a shared goal. So maybe our record might get us that Grammy. You gotta get that that Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. That would be awesome. Yeah. Right. yeah. But what um what was I gonna ask you? Um if you could bring anybody to a dinner table dead or alive, who would it be? I would um I think it's because I literally just watched the duck uh biography like late at night. My my sleep schedule's totally messed up. So like I went to bed at like <laughs> like three AM and um so I was watching a documentary. I don't even know if I sucked the the rabbit hole, but it was uh Sammy Davis Jr. Ooh, yeah. He was cool. Yeah, he was super cool. I mean, he had his tacky moments, like quote unquote tacky moments, but like all around, I think he was like the, the coolest dude. Yeah. And I love the whole rat, rat pack thing. I love, you know, Ocean Eleven is just kind of like the Ocean series is my favorite movie series of all time. Really? Um, I, I just, I thought it was great. But I, I wanted to talk to him about him in his way was like how he broke the barriers. And how he, pers- you know, mm-hmm. persisted on doing that and trying to getting getting to different crowds and and doing what he did. I think that would be amazing because there's sometimes I feel like there's there's this thing that I've been battling with, uh, for a while. It's like culturalism versus like nationalism, and uh, it it was kind of like a battle be- between because like I'm like one out of there's like maybe a hundred black people in my area in, in mm-hmm. like 20 mile radius you know what i mean yeah so like like what we were brought up with is kind of different from the majority around here so it's just kind of like i was at, at first i was like i didn't know how i felt about it because i was like i want more culture like, i wanted to see more people talk about their german heritage or like or you're something like your Nigerian heritage or, or something like that. But mm-hmm. I think the thing that brings us all together is nationalism. And I think if everyone sees each, each other just as American, like would racism and, and stuff like that kind of take a back back seat? You know what I mean? So like, I feel like obviously it's important to have both, but I've always been bouncing back and forth. So I would love, long story short, I would love just to have a conversation with Sammy Davis uh, Jr. Yeah, I think you know it's he's he's interesting because like I definitely if if um when people when I think about reincarnation I always feel like I'm his I'm a reincarnate of Sammy mm-hmm. Davis which mm-hmm. is interesting and and the reason is because like my life in San Francisco mirrors that like and and you know and I think that there's many um like how I say it. There's many uh, 
privileges that my Nigerian heritage and my background has also allowed, which influenced that. But I think very, very similar to you, I think, as, and, and also as somebody who's very interested in cities and I love people, mm-hmm. like transculturalism is, is kind of the word that I've learned that is very useful in this framework to think about these things because, because culture is ever evolving and it's a fusion of all these things, right? Like it, yeah. it's never just been one thing, right? Like if we, since the days of the merchants, like people have been traveling and trading things and it always influenced each other's cultures. Yeah. So nationalism and tribalism are social conditions that allow politics to kind of play placate people and placate um, identity because identity can be robust and certain people can look can might might find it hard to define themselves in those in those terms. And so I think the the people like yourselves and Sammy Davis who are transculturalists who are like very aware of of the otherness and yet wanting the, the wanting that to be trans to tra- to transcend the culture in a way that they can freely move through any one of them. Um, I think I think it speaks to also the luxury the luxury right because it's like no no one who is made it that you know those 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 things stop becoming the issue right right mm-hmm. like Kanye West. <laughs> You know, John Legend. You know, like you know, Jay Z. It's like they they can walk into any room and 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 get the same treatment in any call co- any country, any wor- any part of the world. No one's gonna be like, oh, you know. And some people will go out of their way to be that way, but that's how you know that these things are social conditions, right? Yeah. And that, that and that even even in a certain way, there's a level you get to where it actually doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, you become a cultural icon, and even racists will almost make exceptions for you, and will make will will be hypocritical in in the way they would explain the way they're making the you know the um the the excuses for you, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I I find I find that to be quite unique about Sammy Davis, and I think that I think that it's sad that we are still trying to use nationalism and tribalism as like like it's still so prevalent in America and I think I think it's it's very political and that's like that's the only reason it's still the way it is today because there was a time in America like every time I watch the 80s TV shows or or you know any anything from that era it's like wow wait why did it how did it change because it seems like there was a window here where that was seeming to be like going away right like everyone seemed pretty all about their lifestyle and fitness and you you know it was very multicultural on tv screens and it seems like something shifted um and that's interesting to see that it's also like it's something that we we're going back to and um and i don't know why yeah Uh I, it's just it's just like super strange to, to think about it. I just feel like the only way, like, I feel like nature just like human beings need to have some something to pit themselves against, like, and that goes with all levels. Like, the only way I see there being like world peace is if there were aliens who were trying to attack us, and then so the whole world gets together and be like, all right, we need to, we need to pan together. To, to go against this enemy, you know what I mean? Otherwise, there will always be somebody who's trying to, you know, one-up each other. And True. You know, it's our natural tendency. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I just feel like the nationalism is kind of like the step below that, and, you know, and then, you know, below that is culturalism. It's just kind of like finding that balance, and, and you know, it's, and I'm just having a... Uh, it's just like an interesting time in, in seeing how, people, how it plays out. Like, I yeah. do... Um, the first time I went to Seattle, I think it was like four, four years ago, four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. And oh, see, I, I love Seattle. Actually, um, I want to play. I want to play there. I never played up, up there, but they were, uh, the, they were doing like every single week. They did like a culture kind of thing, and like that week it was like Italian week. So they kind of go up and they explain like you know the history of, of Italy. They have the food. They have the music. They have everything. I just thought that was. 
amazing. But also at the back of my mind, I'm like, well, we're all American. You know what I mean? And it's just kind of like a weird kind of dynamic I've been playing with my, myself me mentally. So, Yeah, it's economics, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think about the way capitalism allows us to um, sell and, and buy into culture. Mm. And that how that how that become more of a driving force too in how people you know it's like people are creating markets you know so it's kind of a way to create markets when you do things like that and 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 if you're globally minded it's challenging because the the market wants you to have a niche you know it's like you're vegan you're you're if you're Italian, you only drink Italian wine. And, and the more you try to hold on to that identity, the mm. more you have to participate in these things where you're exchanging money to continue to reflect that you're part of that identity. Mm. And then that becomes the main thing around it, right? And then you're mm. buying only Italian food. And, you, and so it's, it's this way that culture um, feeds into capitalism or that capitalism um, kind of makes culture like you have to buy into an identity um mm. and i think that that's another thing that's beautiful about you know sammy davis is like no i can do whatever the, i want like yeah. i deserve i deserve a jaguar print like what what no i'm i mean you know it's like i deserve to be in this type of hotel like no one's gonna tell me i can't be that like what like no <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think that's why I also love the, the, the idea of like the concept of, of luxury because that's what Sam he just did everything he bought everything he got the top stuff but he was just kind of living the life that he wanted he kind of went over a little over the top because you know he got into drugs and alcohol and everything but I was like I saw his blueprint I was like I was just so attracted to that you know what I mean and, and it's just I love, I love the whole suit and just the style and everything. But uh, what about you? What was your? What would be your uh, your person that you would bring back? Um, I think it would be MJ. Oh, yeah, I think it would be Michael Jackson because I think he was just so misunderstood, mm -hmm. and I I don't think anybody can give a good um, perspective into his life because I just don't think anybody has had that life, you know, and it's really hard for anybody from the outside to really talk about yeah. life like that. And and so I think he would be somebody that I want to um yeah, to talk to. Um maybe if we could invite uh, Prince to that that table too. That would be um, awesome. Because Prince did some crazy shit too, and I'm just kind of like, bro, I want, I want to have those. Like, I want to be courageous like that. I want to be able to do a half of that stuff without even batting an eye. Because for whatever reason, I'm socially conditioned, and it's, it's interrupting my ability to be so such a free spirit. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is your, um, your take with Prince's? I guess Prince's vault. Like, do you think they should open it up and have the whole world listen to it, or do you think like it should just stay, stay closed? I think that's why they killed him. But yeah, I think they've already opened it. Like, they already released some stuff on Spotify. They, they did. Do yeah. You think, do you think they should have did that, or do you do you think that that should have been hidden? Like, there's because there's a reason why he didn't release it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that. I think that. As far as the money is going to the right people, I think that's fine. Mm. I hope it's not some, you know, I hope it's not going to be something silly like some family member gets a hold of it, gives it to like Sony who owns all the masters to everything. And it's just kind of like, that's bullshit because clearly that's not what he wanted. Yeah. You know? Otherwise he would have done that himself. So that, that would be my only thing about that is that like, that that his his wishes and the way he wanted his legacy to remain on earth or you know is is how it should be because he worked really hard to to make those masterpieces yeah you know like yeah. you know like yeah that's what i hope yeah me too me too. It's just because a lot of the stuff was probably like really unfinished, and you know, I would just I would hate to have like be writing something and it's not finished, and someone releases it. But you know, 
I mean, there's there's also something about that, like honestly, like I always imagine that if I die, like uh, like what 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 will people have as an insight to me? Really, it's my music because that's what I spend the most time doing. So like, I also have that like. You, would I be mad if somebody did that? Not really, because like maybe that's where I needed to have let go of them too. You know, it's mm-hmm. like I, 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 sh- I could have just let go of them, and for whatever reason, my ego is like, oh, I can't release all finished tracks. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. Now yeah. I'm just not doing it. So yeah. like maybe death is like, well, now I have you, so <laughs> Dude, you have- <laughs> can't do nothing <laughs> about that. <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, yeah, and, and so it's in very many ways, like, that. that's encouraged me, actually. So what I do is I have Splice, and Splice uploads all my music onto it as a collaborative track, and I have some collaborators on there. So after I've worked with a producer enough for them to kind of, if me and the producer have sat in a room for more than eight hours to make music, they have access to that those sessions. Mm-hmm. So that one day, if I'm not here, Somebody can make something out of it, you know. Yeah. That would be cool. Like, and you, you it, that's funny because you just never know, like, how your music is going to to uh, play out and uh, affect people. You know what I mean? Like, it could be <laughs> decades down the road, and like someone hears your your track and they're like, "Oh, that's awesome!" and create something, you know, so awesome. So, yeah, yeah. You never know, and that's 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 the beauty of our time that I think some of these other artists didn't have access to and that some of them, some of the old ways that the industry worked also cannot predict, right? It's that like back in the day, you've got this studio, the record label pays for it, people go in, they record. Now everybody's recording and your song, you might write it here, like the Sugar Man story, right? And you, you might hit somewhere in Botswana and they'll be like, this is the story of our time. Mm-hmm. And that's where it's gonna be most felt, you know. And so, it's this thing where it also challenges us as independent musician to musicians to not like, to not like fall into a frame of what is supposed, to, what is how it's supposed to be, but also continue to explore the world, the unlimitedness of the world right now. That we can put music out at our own will on SoundCloud. And somebody somewhere, boy, that might want to off himself by finding it and, and, and find a, a new meaning to it. You know, it's like there's just so much potential for for what that could be, you know? Yeah. I was going to ask you, like, how you felt uh, um, about that. It's just kind of like, you know, before they had the they had the ability to, like, music was so scarce. And then, you know, Napster came and then now Spotify is out and it's just such a, um, like a saturation of, of music. And do you think that's a hundred percent like a good thing or do you, you, you see that there's like, do you see it more as a problem or how do you, how do you feel about it? Um, I think the only sad thing, honestly, is just that the creators are not the ones that make the, the, the buck out of it, you know, mm-hmm. like. I mean, Spotify is founded by a Swedish guy who was a musician, but is also a technologist. So maybe the challenge for musicians these days is that in order to actually benefit the most, they have to also be part of the creative process. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's like the biggest thing from my from where I'm looking is just that like it's just sad that you know if in the, if it, I I would imagine that if Spotify was like a Every everybody who uploads there owns a part of Spotify, and when it IPO'd, everybody got, got came up, and there were more models where the creators and the content makers were ultimately also compensated for. You know, like Instagram, if everybody who joined and produces music is a is is part owner has a share, and when it IPO's, it's like you don't need one person making five hundred million dollars. Like, what the hell? Like, if if for 1,500 people make $500 million, that could be cool too, you know? Mm-hmm. And and so, like, to me, that that's the only challenge that I see in those spaces. But I don't think there's any problem with the access, you know, that 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 we, we are providing with those tools to, uh, to spread music around the world, you mm-hmm. know? Because 
like I said, it's like in, if you're making it, you want it to be heard. You know, I don't care what you say. It's like you're making it like when it's done, you want you want some you want it to hurt to be heard. You want it to touch somebody. And 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 now you can, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. No, you're 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 right. Um, are you on all the all the social um, all the streaming platforms like Apple Tidal? Uh, yeah. Stuff. yeah, I push Spotify because I feel like based on their user data, it seems like that's where most people are these days. So <laughs> that's why I push that one the most. But yeah, I opt into all of those streaming services. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm not I'm not there yet, but uh, maybe maybe one day we'll, we'll see. Oh, uh, is that part of the indie indie vibe? I don't know. It's just, I feel like, you know, I, my first album, I, um, I decided I was just like listening to like a lot of gurus and, and, and everyone, they were like, you know, you should just give them something for free and stuff. And so I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to get my album out for free. And then I did that. And then I, well, after I did that, and like, once you set something out for free, like that's it. And once I did that, like, internally it just felt so it didn't feel good to me you know what i mean right like I've, i worked so hard for something and like i put you know you, you know all this time and hours and sleepless nights to only get this out for free and i'm not saying i should get paid millions of do dollars or something but i should be paid what you value me and it's not right. enough and i kind of feel like when i listen to how like drake is the biggest artist and he he had, you know, how many billion streams that he only makes like sixty thousand dollars a year or something off of it. And I was just like, that's pretty much free for me, <laughs> like, like, right? In, in comparison, so I was just kind of my thought process. But but was like, but 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 here's the thing though, from a business standpoint, he gets millions of streams, which means that he has a brand. Mm -hmm. So what that what he's losing, he's making up for in merch. He's making up for in brand endorsements. He's making up for the most important thing is that he has data to show people that, look, this is how many of you are listening to me. Mm -hmm. And in the capitalist system, that's valuable. Mm -hmm. Like you could also do the same. Like I imagine that you have people in your, in your, in your, in your email list. You know, some people, every time you put out a record, buy it. So you got the super fans. And some people mm -hmm. just listen to it, you know, and they they they, they, they like they, they just consume from the big. So basically, they're, they're not tastemakers. They're people who, they buy only what is popular. Because buying Drake means that when you go to a Drake concert, you can talk about that you bought Drake. And so that's a thing that you're using to bond. So that's you buying, buying into an identity again. So it's, 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 but, but for you, like you've got the super fans and, you know, maybe there's a few people that churn, which means like after a few months of being super excited of your page, they like, you know, they get over it and then there's new people that you get. And mm -hmm. so like, you can definitely make a living wage with that system, mm -hmm. right? Like, and that feels fair. You're like, I know everyone who's buying my stuff and everyone's connected to me. They're, they're really supporting me. Um, but there's something really, um, it's, it's like a business, right? It's like if, if your business works in a local place, you're a small business. If your business can scale, which often means that like, you know, there's some kind of exploitation of labor going on. If it can scale, it's a better business because you've come out, somehow made it very cost effective to do large, to, to do large businesses or, you know, um, do large transactions and mm -hmm. you figured out something to make it more efficient. However, the, the the return is larger right and so it's about that it's that it's that gamble of when you're 60 do you would you have the energy to be putting in this much work or have you are you building things into place where even if you stopped at six by 35 or something you know what i mean do you get the idea yeah is that like is that like at, at what point do you stop working so hard um in, in the model that you're building. And I ask myself that question all the time. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing. I mean, the way I kind of saw it is like, 
me putting stuff on Spotify and stuff like that, like, it, you know, it, everybody works in different ways and I respect everybody's kind of decisions and, and their business. Everyone has to, to make their living. It's just, for me, I just saw, like, putting music on streaming services that don't make, it's like building a, a like, a fork something that's common like but like the way i wanted to i wanted to set up something like a ferrari like you're gonna pay a little bit more but like this is you know we're gonna make sure that you're you're, you're taken care of it's it's all good you're gonna pay pay more but you're part of this brand you're part of this community that that kind of thought process so that's just kind of always the way i saw about um releasing music and and bringing it out to the world um obviously just certain things that like songwriting things like i'll give up for, for free and then you know, and, and other branding issues, but I don't know. It's just, it was always something about Spotify and streaming services that kind of just rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it's like, if we never played, they would never have a platform. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but the ability of technology to, um, predict our behavior is also something that I'm paying close attention to. Mm -hmm. And so I think that I, I hear you. I mean, I, I was very, I, 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 if, if I, if I notice people not go to Spotify as quickly as they did, that would have given me some faith in, mm -hmm. in, in our, you know, in, in the human condition. But at this point we've, we're all getting programmed to do certain things and and you put enough money into it people you can drive people and you know and and that's scary and and i and i think that it's 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 nice to see that you're um holding the front of like no like i'm not gonna go that route and i can get my 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 constituents or my uh, my clients or my fans and people who love my music to kind of think in that in that way and i think that's really beautiful um and i think that i think that um i'm on the i think maybe i'm trying to do both you know i think i think there's the if people get close enough to me they understand where the music is coming from and yes. they come to a show and they buy they buy stuff and 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 if they don't then they listen for free and 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 you know and and they get that because for me I'll tell you, like the day, the day I got on a Spotify playlist, I felt so fucking good. Like it was like, whoa, yeah, whoa, like thank you, like yeah, I've I've been at this long enough. Like it's about time, you know. Yeah, like, it felt it felt good, and to to see the countries streaming it, where it was like it's no longer even me. Like it's not my friends. It's not the fourteen people who love re putting it on repeat and just streaming it for streaming. It's like new yeah. people adding it to their own playlist. And, and that to me was like exactly this feeling of like, now the music is by itself and it's, it's, it's doing its own thing. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so, you know, and, and I, you know, and, and that's not the end all be all, but like, I'm not, I, I would say like that feeling was definitely, definitely, um, one that made me feel like, oh yeah, this is this this is I could see how this is addicting to want to yeah. touch this many people with your music. Oh yeah, I totally understand that 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 side of it. Um, so the screen's telling me that I got a minute and eighteen seconds left. Um, do you want to like I can end this now? I can bring you back in, and you want you want to play us a song? Um. Yeah, we could um maybe we could come back and have to like do a few things real quick. Um but yeah, I could I could um yeah, I could um get on yeah, I could get on and play you guys a song that'll be dope. Okay. Um well, in the meantime, um, for editing purposes and stuff, like tell us your name, tell us your website where they can find you and all that stuff. Uh my name is BC Obateru. I'm at www.busybc.com. I've got a track there that was live today. Support your local artists and um yeah, buy it, pay whatever you can and um let me know. All right, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, just hit me up uh, whenever you're free and then we'll, we'll do a live performance for you. 
Nice, Justin. Thanks for having me on. This was great. Great to connect, great to catch up. This is lovely. Yeah, the same, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, brother. Peace. All right. Take care, man.